In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Praise the Lord! This morning I'm going to be um, sharing on a theme that I've titled, You Are On A Team. Say to your neighbor, you are on a team. I'm sure we all know what a team means. It doesn't consist of one person, does it? It's usually more than one person. Now, just imagine with me for the next one minute that you go into a theater to watch a play or you are watching a movie at home or in the cinema and all of the actors don't know their parts. How would that look? Uh, <laughs> it won't just be comedy, it would, it would be a bit ridiculous because if you are in the theater, you're watching a play or you are at home, you're watching a movie or at a cinema and then the camera is focused on them and they don't know what they're gonna do or say next. They don't know their part. It will look awkward and it will be like a waste of your time and money as well, praise God. But you see, most of us are in church and we are like that. We do not know our parts. When you watch a movie that is like that or a play, what it means is the suspense, the thriller, the resolution, the climax, the anticlimax of it all is completely lost on you because you cannot even understand what is about and you cannot enjoy it. And as believers in the house of God, we are meant to use our gift to be a blessing to one another. Praise the name of the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 12, from 12, I'm just gonna read some parts of it. I will not read every part. It's a scripture that we are very familiar with. We hear it all the time, said and read in so many ways. So I'm just gonna go over some parts of it and then I will talk. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that body, being many are one member, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether be we Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an, were an eye, where, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, and where were the smelling? But now, as God said, the members, every one of them in the body, as it pleased him. I'm just going to stop there because, like I said, it's a familiar scripture. What the scripture was just saying that now we might have different parts of our body. We have our ears, we have our eyes, we have our legs and everything. But everything is working what? Together. Now, the eye cannot say, I'm not going to play my part. Or will not even know when to play his part. Or the ear will not know, okay, now it's time for me to hear what I'm saying now. Not know what to do. There's going to be a lot of confusion. Praise God. Now, Paul talking in this scripture was telling the church in Corinth that if they understood how the body worked, the church of God also works in a similar fashion. Praise the name of the Lord. Though we are all different as we are now, different parts, but if we work together, knowing our parts, we will work seamlessly, effectively, and efficiently. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm just going to do a bit of biology now. I'm not a pro, but I'm just going to read it. Praise the Lord. The nervous system has total control of all the other systems of the body. So these systems respond to the signal sent out by the brain, which are delivered through the spinal cord. Now, the skeletal system provides protection for the nervous system. The digestive system works closely with all the other systems to provide food and energy to all body parts. The respiratory system provides oxygen for all body parts. The circulatory system provides, helps move oxygen through the body created by the respiratory system. This system, the, this system cleans waste, that is the digestive system, it cleans waste from the, okay, this, this, sorry, this, this system cleans waste products from the skeletal, muscular, digestive, respiratory, circulatory, and nervous system. So you see, all these systems, they all work together to make your body what? Function. Now your respiratory system is eating, some of, uh, is, is walking. Some of us probably 
had breakfast this morning. Some of us did not. But you see, your digestive system has done the work of breaking it down. As in, so imagine if the liver now says, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> or your lung says, I don't know what to do now. Or your circulatory system says, I don't know what to do now. You know what that, what that means? When the, when the organs, the different Parts of the body systems are shutting down. Doctors know what that means. That means the patient is almost what? On the way out. So imagine if the church was like that. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. There's something called the 80-20 rule in church. It means that only 20% of people do 80% of the work in church. So the other 80%, they've enjoyed the wonderful praise and worship, they are reading our bulletin. They can see people. That's Brother Pat on the camera there. Sister Euphemia standing there. They give them their envelopes when it's time for offering. They usher them in. And what happens after that? They leave church. Praise the Lord. So you see that only 20% is doing the work of 80%. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is something that is common to all churches. That's why it's called the 80-20 rule in, in the church. It's common to all churches. And my father's house is not an exception. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We can do better than that. Praise God. You know, thanks for advancements in science. We see that, you know, paraplegics and quadriplegics, they can live a meaningful life. You know, they have all these gadgets and systems that can make them talk or lift their fingers or do things that they would necessarily not have been able to do if there were no such advancement. It's the same thing with the church. So these people, they live a limited life. It can't be a full and a robust life that they would, they would normally have if they had all parts of their body what, functioning properly. And I'm sure a lot of us, when we see people like that, we feel a nudge in us. You know, we feel a bit you know, sad for them because we wish it, did, it wasn't like that because we know the limitation that they will be facing. But do you know that my father's house is like a paraplegic or a quadriplegic? Do you believe me? Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you believe me? Because it's the same 80 to 20 rule that we have here. So my father's house is not working at an optimal level. As it should. Because we do not have enough people to do the work of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're not working at an optimal level. Because not every member is fully engaged in serving the Lord in line with his or her spiritual gifts. That's why you see maybe you're chasing, oh, but I mean, not trying to call anybody, please. But I mean, oh, go here, do this, do that. Sister, this, do this, do that, do that. That is because the church is in desperate need of people to do what to step in. So that it can lift other people up. So it can reduce the burden. Praise the Lord. So imagine my father's house as someone limping. Because that is what it is. If you've been a member of my father's house for a long time or for a short time and you are still seated in the pew, you are not doing anything, then you are making my father's house limp. Because he's not able to work at an optimal level. Praise the name of the Lord. So how many of us believe what the scripture says? How many of us believe what the Bible says? It's not a trick question. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just here to really, in, you know, just jail us up this morning. Praise God. How many of us believe what the scripture says? Some people are still not confident. <laughs> I'm not going to call anybody, trust me. How many of us believe what the scripture says? I want to see all hands up. Praise God. And how many of us believe that it's profitable? Good. Then we need to begin to leave out what 1 Corinthians 12 says. If every part of the body knows its part, not just in knowing your part, because you can know your part and still decide somebody else will do it. 
But if we all know our part and then we play it fully, then the church of God can thrive. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm going to read. So can we continue from that second, first Chronicles 12? And go to the part when he was talking about all of the bodies working together. No part is too small. Each part is important. I think that would be about your 20-ish. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen. While the more honorable parts do not require this special care, so God has put the whole body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. Praise the Lord. Amen. Nothing is too small to do in the house of God. Everything you do in the house of God honors God. And then he honors you as well. And he brings so much into your life. Praise the name of the Lord. And Paul was talking to the church in Corinth because there was a lot of issues with them, you know, with gifts, with this, with that. And all. I was saying to them, don't you guys know that what you're do doing is like you're pulling your hands here and then somebody is pulling your legs there. But we are one member. When we act like that, we cannot be productive. We cannot do what we are supposed to do. We cannot get to where we ought to get to. Quicker, faster, easier, less stressful. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, and Paul was one of the most gifted people in the Bible. We know that. But you see, you understood that. Even as good, in quotes, because Holy God is good, but as endowed as he was, he knew he could not do this work alone. He needed to be part of a team. Praise the name of the Lord. And what he was trying to do, and if you look at all of his books, he will always end with greetings to people in the church. And he will talk about them, how they did this, how they did that. Because he also wanted to reiterate to us all the time, now when we read the scripture, that each and every one of us, we have a part to play. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So uh, for you to function as a fully engaged member of the body of Christ, serving the Lord and others with your spiritual gift, there are six things you must know. And these were six things that Paul knew. And he wants you to know that today. He wants me to know that today as well. Because I believe that the Christian race can be easy. Trust me, when I look at someone like Daddy Jill, or I look at someone like Josemiah, or all of these other people that we see, they inspire us to want to, to do the things that they do. But the truth is, we cannot make the sacrifice that they make. Praise the name of the Lord. But these things are doable. And they are possible. If we can just do the extra, praise God. So there are six things Paul knew, and the six things he wants us to know today, and I'm going to share with us very quickly. Paul knew that the church is not a one-man show, but a team effort. Praise God. Can we read Romans 16? He knew it was not a one-man show. It was a team effort. Praise God. Romans 16. Commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a deacon in the church of Creek. Cry. So, like I said, I'm, I'm, I said this is actually while I was giving him the passages I was going to use today. For the purpose of this teaching, there are some of these names I cannot pronounce, so I'm not going to attempt. <laughs> so, just follow me. If I say brother C, brother T, I'll use the first letter of their name. Just follow me. Praise God and look at your screen. Praise the Lord. Can we go on? Two. Welcome in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many and especially to me. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in the ministry of Jesus Christ. I'm sure we know this, this, those two. They were very popular. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. I am thankful to them, and so are all the Gentile churches. Also give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. Greet my dear friend, Brother E. He was the first person from the province of Asia to become a follower of Christ. 
Give my greetings to Mary, who has worked so hard for your benefit. Greet Brother A and Junior, my fellow Jews, who were in prison with me. They, were, they are highly respected among the apostles and became followers of Jesus before I did. Greet Brother A, my dear friend in the Lord. Great brother you, our co-workers in Christ, and my dear friend, brother C, brother S. Great brother A, a good man whom Christ approves, and give my greetings to the believers from the house of brother A. Great brother H, my fellow Jew, greet the Lord's people from the house of brother N. I'm going to stop here. And I don't, when I pronounce names, I always want to do, do it right, so I don't want to do it wrong. That's why I'm saying that. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So you see, it was naming all these people. And it was not just naming them. It was telling us what each and every one of them were doing. All their parts. The parts that they were playing. Greet this person. He did this. Greet this person. He did this. And I'm sure Paul wasn't saying this because he wanted to make other people feel bad. He wanted to just encourage them because the Bible talks about all words, spurring one another unto God, unto good works. Praise the name of the Lord. So that was him telling that, yes, I might be this super brother who wrote so many you know, books of the Bible, but I cannot walk alone. It's not a one-man show. And there was something he said in Philippians. I'm going to read that much later. Because if you're going to live as a Christian, there's a certain understanding that you must have. And when you have that understanding, it makes your life a whole lot easier. It makes your relating with people a whole lot easier. It makes the Christian work a whole lot easier. It makes your life more fulfilling and joyful. Because at the end of the day, what do we all want? We want to be happy. Is that not? Whatever it is... We all want to be happy. And that is why the Bible says he has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Not just any kind of life, but a rich life. A one that is filled with everything that will make your life how he has designed it to be. How he intended it to be. Praise the name of the Lord. So he knew that it was not a one-man show. It's a teamwork. It's a team effort. He could have said, I can, I can go alone. But there was no way Paul could have gone alone. He couldn't have been able to do all these things. He wouldn't have been able to have the help that he needed if he felt that it was a one-man riot squad. I am so gifted. I can do this. I can run here. Because it's not a spirit. It cannot be everywhere. It's in the flesh. Like we and I, like I, you and I are. Praise the name of the Lord. And then if we go to the, to, to the book of Colossians 3, Colossians 4 from 7. Praise God. I'm going to read this as well. You know, these days they use a lot of words like, you know, somebody is a player, coach, and all of those kind of things to just make you feel like, you know, you're one special person. Praise the name of the Lord. But what they mean is that when you're a player, coach, for those of us who follow football, it means that you are able to relate as a coach. Please correct me if I'm wrong. You're able to relate as a coach and as a player. Praise the name of the Lord. So when you see someone like Pep Guardiola now, and they're talking about, oh, how is he able to do all of the things that he, he can do with, with Manchester City? And all his track record, even before he came to Manchester. Because he has an understanding of what it means to be a coach. And a player to bring the best out of each and every one of the players that he has. Praise the name of the Lord. And Paul was that kind of person. He was a player coach. He knew the things that he had to do. He knew the things that he could do as good as Guardiola is. He cannot leave his bench and come and run on the pitch and collect the ball from everybody. Can he do that? But they're all working as what? As a team. And I'm not a Manchester City fan, so... <laughs> it's just, I just like Gajola. I'm just a bit biased. Praise the Lord. Don't let my husband hear. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You know, so you see, he, you know, Paul had that understanding. So he knew that it wasn't only, he was not the only player on, his, on, on the team. He was going to have to work with other people. Praise the name of the Lord. So he knew this. So everywhere he went, it was always with a team of people. Even with Jesus, Jesus understood that. He knew that for him to successfully do the work of the ministry, to come and die for our sin, the assignment, one assignment he came to do on earth, he was going to need people around him. Even Jesus was not a one-man riot squad. He was not a one-man show. So why should you be one? 
Praise the name of the Lord. He, un- he had that understanding. So, Sasha, can you give me that Colossians from 4 now? So, Brother T will give you a full report about how I'm getting along. He is a beloved brother and faithful helper who serves me in the Lord's work. Praise the name of the Lord. Imagine somebody talking about you like this in your absence. I have sent him to you for this very purpose because what? He's faithful and he works with me. Praise the name of the Lord. To let you know how we're doing and to encourage you. Praise God. I am sending Brother O, a faithful and beloved brother, one of your own people. He and Brother T will tell you everything that is happening here. Brother He, who is in prison with me, sends you his greetings. And so does Brother M, Mark, Barnabas' cousin. As you were instructed before, make Mark welcome if he comes your way. Jesus, the one we call Justice, also sent his greetings. These are the only Jewish believers among my co-workers. They are working with me here for the kingdom of God. And what a comfort they have been. Praise the name of the Lord. Will it not be wonderful if somebody talks about you so gloriously? Praise the Lord. So, brother, in, in, in Colossians 4, 7, you know, brother, did a bit of research with this. Brother T brought Paul's letter from Rome to Colossae since the apostle was in prison. So, imagine Paul was in prison. He was writing all these books we are reading today. But as gifted as he was, he still needed a team member. To take what? The letters to other people, what he was writing. Praise the name of the Lord. He needed someone to take those letters to the other church so we can be of benefit to us today. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, Brother O accompanied Brother T on this trip. Brother A, Aristarchus, was a Jewish believer from Thessalonica who traveled with Paul when he took the financial gift to the needy saints in Jerusalem. Brother Epaphras, commends him for his prayers and concern for these three churches. I'm going to talk about him much later as well. And then we have Luke. He said he accompanied Paul on his missionary journeys, including his shipwreck on the way to Rome. How many of us can risk our life like that? I'm not sure most of us can boast of that. He was the only worker with Paul near the end of his second imprisonment as a faced execution. We have Nifma. This is a sister who hosted the church in our home. Praise the name of the Lord. So all these people had their parts and they were playing it so well. And because of that, the gospel was going on. It was spreading. It was going on. It was spreading. They were not afraid to lose their life, to give, in, to give so much just so that you and I can read the Bible that we're reading today. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And you see, for teamwork to work, there can be no jealousy. There can be no jealousy. Because we must all understand that we're working for the glory of God. That's why I was saying, if you understand this thing, eh, and you know your part, you have found out what your gifting is. It doesn't matter what brother C is doing or brother A is doing. That gift that you have, you will use it to the glory of God. You are fulfilling your purpose. And you're playing your part in the body of Christ. A lot of Christians are so miserable. Especially workers. Because choir, no offense, I'm just, no offense. (laughs) Because you'll be thinking, I have... My voice is better than Sister A. Why is she the only one singing? I can sing better than that. Imagine you're thinking in church. You're completely shut down. That's jealousy. And we are supposed to be what? Part of one team. Praising the Lord. Because as a chorister, your job is not just to come and sing. You must have an understanding that you are a minister. When I come here, when I sing, I want people to be healed. When I sing, I want there to be transformation and, and encounters with people. But most of the time, what we see is, is this internal rivalry of I could have done better. She didn't even sing this well. She couldn't carry the congregation well. This pastor, this sister can carry the congregation better. This person could have done. Do you understand what I'm saying? And like I said, no offense. But for us, because what I do, I, I don't deceive myself. I tell myself as it is. Because I know that's the only way I can get better. Praise the Lord. 
And that's the dynamics we have in our marriage as well. We don't sugarcoat. If I need to, I will. If it needs to, it will. Because that's the only way we can both grow. Praise the name of the Lord. So when you, when you are, when you are someone who is given to such comparisons, then competition will set in. And when there's competition, you know there can, there will be a lot of strife. And strive is something that is horrible. Strive, you don't see strive. But strive is those things that just simmer. It's just on the ground simmering. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. But you don't see it. Like I said, now she can't even carry the congregation. That's strive. Nobody can see. You're probably there. Hallelujah. Do you get what I mean? But it's there. And it's not only in the choir. Other departments as well. Other departments, oh, why is you that only that person? Why is you that other person? Why, da, 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 da. All those things are strife. And wherever they strive, Spirit of God cannot move there. Praise the name of the Lord. Grace Meyer said God told her three things when she was going to start her ministry. Never fiddle with church money. Second, I can't remember. But she said, third, keep strive away from your ministry. So just she oh something that she she does so so relentlessly vehemently so there are employees they know that strive not here unnecessary competition arguing all of those kind of things no way so if there's an occurrence or something like that in the organization they have a conflict resolution you know all those conflict resolution they will go to and you know okay what's the problem what did he do what did she what da, 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 and okay. They kind of do it the first time. If it's ongoing, they let them go. They let them go. They just they let them go. Because you know what, you know what it does? When they strive, clamor, the spirit of God cannot be there. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you have that understanding that we're working together to the glory of God, you will do your part. No part is small. Every part is recognizable. And as you do it, watch your intentions. Because it's a horrible thing for us to do all of these things on earth. And on that day, you will be burnt by fire. Praise the name of the Lord. Watch your intentions. Because that is what counts before God. In everything you're doing, watch your intentions. Check yourself thoroughly. Nobody has to know. Because you see, this race, everybody's running it. I'm not running yours, you're not running mine. So I have to keep watching myself. You have to keep watching yourself. Watching myself. You have to keep watching yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. So you see, you don't... Watch your intentions, whatever you do. In the house of God. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, Paul had that understanding. When people were talking, oh, Paul. Uh, Paul said, no, 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 no. Keep me out of that. I'm not part of that. Paul planted... Apollo's watered. But who gives increase? It's God that gives increase. Because we are all working what? To the glory of God. We're working for the glory of God. So I don't know what you guys are talking about. Please just don't mention my name there. Because you must be able to walk away from, some, from, from discussions. And there's some people in church, they call strife. You see, there's no perfect organization. There's no perfect place. Even yourself as an individual, you're not perfect. So when you are with people who are always criticizing... What should be done? What is not done should have been done, should have been said, shouldn't have been said. Yes, because we are all still in the flesh. We'll always, you know, there'll be mistakes here and there. But walk away from such people. And if you have the boldness, address them. If you are in a place, you don't believe in what they are doing. Move away. It's as simple as that. You don't believe in it, move away. Because God is looking at you. He can hear these things, whether I said in, in secret or in the open. He can hear it. And if you do believe, if you do believe that one day, one day, you're going to stand before God and give account of your life, you watch what you say and do. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It was the same thing with John. When John, obviously John was a forerunner of Jesus. He came before Jesus. And he had had his own disciples. So when Jesus came, got baptized, started his ministry and everything. And people were moving from 
John to Jesus. And the disciples said, ah, Brother John, there's fire on the mountain. All these our disciples that we have sweated and prayed for, they are going over to Jesus. We're losing ground. But John said, what is this? It does not matter. Because he knew what? He understood what his job was. Forerunner. Praise the name of the Lord. Secondly, we are all working what? To the glory of God. But those things can cause major issues. Praise the name of the Lord. So please, it's not a one-man show. Huh? And it's a team effort. And it's always beautiful when people work together. A long time ago, when I was still, you know, that was in Nigeria, my um, creative director, one of the things that he always says is that it doesn't matter who does what when we work as a team. But when we do well, who cares? His team, everybody. And we say, no idea is stupid. No idea is stupid. And I've learned that. No idea is stupid. So if we were to brainstorm, he said, no idea is stupid. And he gave people the confidence. He said, okay, can we not? What if we do this? And you will see the silliest of ideas morph into great campaigns. Because someone said, oh, do you know, what if we add this? What if we add this? What if we add this? What if we do this? And then that small idea that seems so ridiculous becomes something so big. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's, it's when you have that you know, camaraderie in there that you're able to walk well like that. Praise the name of the Lord. And I know one of the things that kills team spirit is lack of trust. When people have been wounded, it's difficult to trust again and open up. But don't let that discourage you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The team consists of men and women from different racial and social economic backgrounds. Praise the Lord. So Paul realized that this team is from different backgrounds. Like Sister Sarah and Brother Phillips got married on Friday. Legally, spiritually, they are one. Praise the Lord. But the truth is, experientially, they are not one yet. That's going to come over time as they commune with each other, do things with each other. You know, their experiences, they will begin to really become one. It's a process. Don't hurry it. <laughs> Don't rush it. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Even Jesus knew that. Jesus had 12 disciples. Some were, one was a tax collector. One was a, a doctor. One was a zealot with different personalities and temperaments. Praise the Lord. But he, he was able to work with each other because we are all, diff, we are all from different backgrounds, social economic backgrounds. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, some were not even educated, but some were. Paul said we are no longer Jews or Gentiles, no longer male or female. We are all what one now. Praise the Lord. So it doesn't matter where I come from. It doesn't matter what my experiences might have been, whether good or bad. As long as I'm not in the body of Christ, we have now become one. Because you see, our purpose and our vision should morph into what? The vision of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So, we might all be different, like I said, from different socioeconomic backgrounds, educational backgrounds, cultural backgrounds. Nobody is no longer Ghanaian, Ashanti, Nigerian, Igbo, from the Caribbean. We're no longer that anymore. We are now what? One in Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I'd like us to read Philippians 3, 3 to 6. This was Paul talking here. Because if there was someone who had cause not to mingle with anybody, even after he had given his life to Christ. It was Paul. Praise God. Philippians 3, 3 to 6. He said, For we worship by the Spirit of God, and are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no effort in confidence in human effort. 
Although I have confidence in my own effort, though I have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could, indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. I was circumcised when I was eight years old. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. The real Hebrew, if there was ever one, praise God, I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for the righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. Once, one, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. You see, what's giving you is C, is pedigree. If I have reason not to mingle with just anybody... One Simus was a slave. Praise God. If I have reason not to mingle with anybody, that's me. He said, I am the Hebrew of the Hebrew that was ever one. I am the, the cream of the crop. I have such, a, you know, an enviable pedigree that I should pick and choose who I talk with and who I mingle with. But it was not like that. Paul was able to talk to both the Gentiles, the Jews, the bondsmen, the servants, everybody. Because you see, as long as we are now in Christ, all of those worldly, you know, specifications, those worldly things are no longer, those no longer describe who we are. Praise the name of the Lord. We should be able to work together regardless of our differences. Would there be differences? Definitely. There will, there will be differences because my perspective about things will not be yours. Praise God. But you see, we must always agree to disagree. But we must do it respectfully of each other. And we should always realize that the word of God is our standard. So what does the word of God say about this? Once we are able to do that and we kill the flesh and it's not about me having my way, there wouldn't be any problem. Because the, at the root of all of this is you wanting to have your way or your say. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The team is the family of God. So once you give your life to Christ, the Bible says all things are passed away, all things have become new. We are now what? In the same family. Whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're yellow, whatever color that you are, those descriptions don't count anymore. We are now just what? One in God. There are no racial divides. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Paul himself who was such a zealous Jew called Brother T, Tachios, our beloved brother, in Colossians 4 7. He calls the converted slave, one Simons, a beloved brother. Praise the name of the Lord. So it doesn't matter anymore. We are all what? All one. All one. Praise the name of the Lord. Every member is a servant and a slave of Jesus Christ. In Roman times, that's number four. I hope we're following. Praise God. Six things that Paul knew that he wants us to know as well. The first one, church is not a one-man show, but a team effort. The team consists of men and women from different racial and social economic backgrounds. Then the third one is, the theme is the family of God. And then the fourth one is, every team is a servant slave of Jesus Christ. In Roman times, they had slaves. So if you've been you know, with a particular master for a long time, the master can say, okay, you've been such a faithful and dedicated you know, servant. I'm going to give you your freedom. Praise the Lord. And some of them can look at their master and say, oh, this my master has been so good to me. Why do I want to leave him? Where else will I go? I want to continue serving him. Then what he does is that he has become, he becomes a bond servant. He has changed from being somebody who was a slave by obligation, by, by compulsion to somebody who has now become a slave by, by volition. Does that make sense? Now he's saying, no, now I'm going to serve you. I have decided to serve you. I have made up my mind to serve you. 
Praise the name of the Lord. So us as well as believers, we have now become bond servants. Because when you look at what Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary, the shame he endured, the pain, the agony, Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says that before he was to die on the cross, he was praying and he was shedding blood. I mean, I can't even begin to imagine how someone's sweat was like blood. Praise God. And I've not been able to watch the Passion of the Christ till today. Just because of all of the reviews I read that is so bloody. If you look at it, if you watch it, you, you can't even begin to imagine. You know, It just kind of really cuts deep. If you look at if you see the sacrifices that you know, Jesus made. So when you think about all of these things, how he has saved you, how he has helped you, how he has delivered you, you have no choice to decide that I want to be a bond servant to Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is what we all are. We all should be, ideally. Praise God. And Paul will say, bond servant. In Romans 1.1, 1, 1, he said, I, Paul, the bond servant of Jesus Christ. In James 1.1, 1, 1, he said the same thing. He said, this letter from Paul, a slave of Jesus Christ, chosen by God. This letter is from James. Je- okay. Sashay. Okay, go on. This letter is from James, a slave of God and of the Lord. Jesus Christ. I'm writing to the 12 tribes of, of Jewish. If you read some other translation, they say bond servant. They said bond servant. James said it was a bond servant. Paul said it was a bond servant because they had willingly at this point given themselves to Christ completely. It's like, I die, I die. Like the, you know, the Hebrew children. I don't, it doesn't matter anymore. Praise the Lord. Praise the, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And then the fifth is, the team is focused on prayer and the word with the aim of helping every member to stand mature in Christ. In Colossians 4, 12, Paul was talking about Brother Epiphario, said, he always laboring earnestly for you in prayers, that you might stand perfect and fully assured in the will of God. He didn't have to do that. Praise God. But you see, because we have now become what? Members of what? Of this one family. Your well-being becomes my burden. Just as my well-being becomes your burden. We have people in church who are intercessors who are always praying for every member of my father's house. We have people in his pillars as well who meet fortnightly to pray for the women, the men, the children in my father's house. They don't have to do it. But because they realize that we are now members of one body. And we want everybody to gain access to the things that God has promised us. Because we know we have an adversary who is going to try and keep trying to stall those things or want to make them not come to pass. So we have these people who are praying all the time so that you get hold of the things that God has promised you, one, and then also that you mature into the fullness of the stature of the person that God wants you to be. Praise the name of the Lord. So we have people in, in church doing this. Not only what Paul was saying to us about this brother. We have people as well. You know, Paul was saying in Colossians 1, 28, said that I might present every man complete in Christ. How was he going to present every man complete in Christ? It was going to be true prayers. True sharing of the word of God. So that as you hear the word of God, it cleanses you. It takes away the draws in your life. So you are maturing. You are growing. You're no longer a babe that you need to be fed milk or pampered, you know, or suited. But no, you are growing. You're able to take hard things. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And Paul said, yes, you might have people who are praying for you as well. But you yourself, you have an obligation. He said, let the word of God dwell in you richly. So if you have these people praying for you, do your part. Read the word of God. Because if the word of God dwells in you richly, if you study it, you know what he's saying about you. It's not just hearsay. It's not, you know, third party experiences, but it becomes your experience because you're reading it as well. You can appropriate those words. You can get your rhema words from there. And you can even have a rhema word from someone. Praise the name of the Lord. Because see, we are all members of the church right now, one body. So we're able to lift up one another, whichever way that we can. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm going to end with this one. 
team members often disappoint. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Because that is the reality. Judas was part of the team. What did he do? What did Jesus, Judas do to Jesus? He betrayed Jesus. What more disappointment can cut that deep? Praise God. Even Paul had Mark with him. And Mark left him in Rome. But thankfully, Mark came back. And Paul was saying in 2 Timothy 4, 11, that when you're coming, he was telling, he was telling Luke that when he's coming, bring Mark along with you. This was the same Mark that disappointed him. But thankfully, he retraced his step and came back to the faith. And he became a valuable servant, a valuable helper, a valuable person to Paul. Praise the Lord and his ministry. Praise the name of the Lord. And then we had a Demas who was with Paul as well. But Paul said he loved the world more than the things of the Spirit. He left and never came back. But that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. So there will always be disappointment in the team. If I were to speak to many HODs now, they can tell you of members that will say, oh, I will be there. And then five minutes to the start of the program, I'm so sorry, I cannot come. And I know some of these things, to be honest, it's, it's beyond your control. But for some people, they are perpetual. Like when you see the text, you'll be like, okay. It's, I don't, and I'm, I'm not trying, honestly, to, to um, talk to anybody or anything. But I'm just saying it as it is. There are some members that they are not just pulling their weight. And what they are doing most times is just dragging every other person down. Because they are like the 80 people. Praise the name of the Lord. They are just there. You'd rather not have them if you have your way than have them. Praise the Lord. But you see, you have a part to play. Don't be that team member that when your leader just sees your text message, one of those things. Don't be like that. But be one of those that when your leader sees it, he or she knows that, oh, for this person not to come, there must be something. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Like I said, there will be circumstances that will not make us come or not make us be able to do things. But if you have been sitting in church for so long or you are a leader or a member and you know you are not giving 100%, it's not good enough. Because it's not to man. You must understand. It's not to man you are doing it. You are doing it unto God. And if you know you want rewards as a steward. you Because know, I think it's going to be so shameful on that day by God's grace. When God is like, oh, brother T, take this. For all this you have done. For all this you have done. For all this you have done. And you are just on that line thinking, oh my goodness. I wish I had done more. I wish I had done more. Because you can't do more. We all have the grace to do more. Do you know there are times that you have no idea what you are capable of doing? And then you step into like, oh my goodness, I didn't even know I could do that. Do you know that joy that comes and it pushes you for more? But if you are just sat there thinking about all of the reasons why you cannot do what you're doing, you will not be able to do more than you're doing. And what it means is that you just be like that servant. Let's, let's just give this person this one. Let's see the outcome of this one. Praise the name of the Lord. Because God wants to give you more to do. There's so much that can be done in the house of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And the rewards are endless. And some of the things, you know, most times we are, oh, I have this. I'm talking to myself as well. Please, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm, to, I'm just trying to spoil us son. I'm talking to myself as well. Now you're thinking, oh, this or that or this or this or that. But 
I have come to realize that when you begin to grow spiritually, when you begin to attain spiritual maturity, there are some things that you will just do. Praise the name of the Lord. There are some things that you know you have to do. Nobody's going to come up pat you on the back. You're just going to know you have to do it. You're in the house of God. And you're sure that this is where God has planted you. You're going to say to yourself, I. Say I. I. Put your name there. Yes. Praise the Lord. He's saying, Mr. and Mrs. Igbinijis. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You're going to say I. I. Put your name there. Do more. It will be a very horrible thing on that day when God is giving people so many things and you're just there. You're just saying, ah, thank God I even made heaven. No, that's all. <laughs> Whether they are giving, I don't even, I don't even mind. <laughs> the fact that I've entered heaven, that's all I want. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Don't be like that. Do more. There's so much to do in the house of God. There's so... And, and God has given all of us gifts. You're thinking, I don't know my gift. Start from somewhere. As you start, you start to know where you are. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And does anybody know the word bench warming or bench warmers? Everybody is familiar with that word. Is it a gift of the Spirit? Praise the Lord. Is it a gift of the spirit? Is it a gift of the flesh? Don't be a bench warmer. It's not a gift. Come on the field. Have you seen, it's just something that we can all relate you know, to very easily. When they are playing football, the spectators, you'll be seeing them, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you're not even on the playing field. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. They want to play the penalty. Like, their, their eyes are short or they are shaking or quivering. But they're not even on the playing field. God does not want you to be a spectator. He wants you to be on the playing field. And when you are there, oh, people know you are there. Praise the Lord. When you are there, let people know you are there. Not as a show off. Because like I said, what's important? Your intentions. But because you know you are doing it for your father in heaven to, for men to catch a glimpse of his glory for men to know that if God can use this person like this there's something in me too let me see let me cultivate, let me nurture so I can be a blessing to the body of Christ and so many people need people who are blessings in their life right now just someone to be an encourager praise God just someone to, to lift their hands up just someone to be there for them there's so many, so many, so many ministries. Not this one. Because this is one people think is, it's nothing. But the ministry of help, there's nothing that compares to that. You know, Jesus said, when I was thirsty, he did not feed me. He did not give me drink. When I didn't have clothes, he did it. But you see, when we do these things, we're doing it for Christ. And what joy will it be? What joy will it be? If your rewards as a steward is bountiful, because you can say to yourself that I, say it again, put your name there, I have finished my course and I have done it well. If you believe that's what you're going to start to do from now, rise up on your feet and just speak to God because I don't know where you are. Speak to him. Talk to him. And say, Father, Lord, I know I can do more. I know I think too much about myself. I know I second guess. I know I assume. I know I feel I'm not capable. I feel I'm not gifted enough. I feel that, oh, there's so many people better than I am. But all of those do not matter. If you focus on God and just put your hands on the plow, it will show you. He will use you. Father, Lord, I give you thanks. I bless you for your word. I ask the Lord God that the word that we have heard today, it will spur us. 
to begin to do our part in your body, in the name of Jesus, so that when you come, you can say to us, good, faithful servant, well done. You have made me proud on earth. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God.